Greetings. Welcome all of you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Hi, my name is j o n g i n Lee. I'm the pastor of Franklin Lakes United Methodist Church. Today we've gathered here as Monday Thursday or Holy Thursday. So today the following the tradition will be washing others' feet. as Jesus did to his disciples. Also, we will celebrate the Holy Communion as Jesus shared his last meal with his disciples before his crucifixion. I hope and pray that this will be a chance for us to remember the love of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for all of us. And also pray that the Holy Spirit will fill our heart so that we can be united in the Spirit as we worship the Lord. Please join me in the call to worship. Jesus invites you to set aside some time with him today. Jesus calls you to the dinner table, the God of all offers to serve you. Jesus has a word of love for you. Will you listen? Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray together. God of love, we thank you for making room for us at your table as you did for your disciples years ago. As we remember the last supper you shared with them, help us to embody the generous and humble spirit you taught your fa followers on that day. Amen. Please pray with me. God, open our hearts and minds so we can fully receive the truth you need to hear today. Kindle your truth in our hearts so others would see it revealed through your lives, our lives. Following Christ, we pray. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Our Bible reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17 and 31 through 35. Listen for the word of God. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet, Jesus answered, unless I wash you. You have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. May we hear and respond. Amen. Today we gathered as a Monday Thursday, a Holy Thursday service. Through this service, we remember that Jesus celebrated the last meal he shared with his disciples before his crucifixion, at which he instituted communion as a sacrament. Right after the last meal with his disciples, Jesus gave the new commandment before he was crucified. He said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. From John 13, 34. The Latin for new commandment is mandatum novum. The word Monday for today, Monday, Thursday, comes from that word mandatum. At the Passover meal, Jesus also gave an example of his new commandment 
love one another through washing the feet of his disciples. We often think of spiritual discipline as between me and God. But you know what? Jesus' example here to the scripture shows that a key part of our faith is outward. It is about the willingness to receive and give love by serving one another. We can meet Simon Peter in today's scripture, one of, his one of Jesus' disciples. He seems like he represents many of us in different ways. He is shocked that Jesus, his Lord, would wash his feet instead of the other way around. But as soon as Jesus tells him, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter wants Jesus to wash his hands and head too. Simon Peter is eager to do things the right way, to check all the boxes to guarantee his place with Jesus. But Jesus refocuses Simon Peter. Holiness is not just about being clean and not doing anything wrong, but it is more about loving and serving others. This same kind of intimacy, humility, and love that occurs here by foot washing is also present around the communion table. Around the table, we bring our brokenness to God and the presence of others, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and share together in the blood and body of Christ through bread and cup. When we partake at the table, we know that we live by grace alone. The grace of God is not only for us in a faith community, but by extension to love and accept one another, overcoming all the differences and barriers we have. This new commandment asks us to love and embrace one another, regardless of their skin color, their ethnicity, their race, their gender, their sexual orientation, their educational level. Because we are all created to love and be loved by one another. Let me share a story from CNN News last, last month. There was a plumber named Andrew Mitchell from New Jersey. He drove to Texas with his family to fix burst pipes and other damages from a devastating winter storm last February. He and his family, with, he and his family drove 22 hours from Morristown with their two-year-old son. Before leaving New Jersey, he bought as many as plumbing supplies as he could afford because those items were hard to find in Texas at that time. He stayed in Houston for three weeks and helped people who had to relocate, relocate themselves due to broken pipes and you know, heating problems. This family overcame the physical distance to help others with loving hearts. When Jesus gives his disciples and us the new commandment to love one another, this is not just for their own benefit. The kind of love they show each other is meant to be a witness to all the world that God's love is for all people. And God's love is shown in and through us to others. It is our calling to practice this love in our daily lives so that people can see and experience their love through us. 
and even God strength, strengthened us to do it as God's children. Let me close today's message with verse 35 from today's gospel lesson. It says, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Loving God, we pray to you today, thankful for the warm invitation to sit at your table, thankful for the way you love us and teach us how to love each other. We admit that there are times when we fall short in loving the way you call us to. There are times when we maintain the status quo instead of humbling ourselves to care for one another. There are times when we push away each other's love because it means letting others in. Worse, there are times when we betray you and hurt each other, knowingly or unknowingly. We admit that the world does not always know us by our love. Forgive us, Jesus, by your broken body and blood shed for us. Let us not take your forgiveness lightly, but accept it as both a gift and a call to be the people we were made to be. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please prepare a bucket of water and a towel for foot washing for each other. Humble service is the message behind this foot washing. As C.S. Lewis once said, humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. So when you wash, you wash each other's feet, Please remember the washing on another's feet, just as Jesus, the teacher, washed the disciples' feet. So does Jesus wash your feet. Accept this love and service from God and from me. Pass this love and service on to others in humility, not regarding yourself as better than others.
This is time to participate in Holy Communion. Please prepare a loaf of bread or cracker and a cup of juice or water. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a happy thing for us to praise and thank the God who created us and created everything. You created us for a relationship with you. When we betrayed you, You kept your promise to love us. You kept calling us forward, toward you, out of bondage and through the wilderness. You made a banquet table for us in the most unlikely of places, even in Death Valley, as enemies surrounded us. And so, with all your people from every age and place, we praise you, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God, you are holy. And so is your son, Jesus Christ. But you showed us that real holiness is not about being above others. Jesus, you showed us that holiness looks like humility. You showed us holiness looks like breaking bread together, like washing your disciples' feet. You showed us that holiness looks like Love that gives of itself. When the world was cruel and violent toward you, you did not return evil to evil. You died. The world-shattering event happened three days later when you rose from the dead. You made it clear that all sin and evil in the world cannot outdo your living love. Your disciples become the church, a people sustained by your presence, a people called to the work of humble service and love that you started. You promised your presence to the disciples and to us at the meal you shared with them right before you were killed. You took some bread, thanked God, and broke it, and gave it to your friends gathered there, saying, Take it. This is body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over later, You took a cup of wine and thanked God for it too. You gave the cup to your disciples and told them, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as we remember that special meal and the promise of your presence, Jesus, we partake of the bread and cup in gratitude with all. In remembering you this way, we commit ourselves to living by your example. But not just that. We live by your example only through your power, giving ourselves back to you as you gave to us by the mystery of our faith. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Now we call you, call on your Holy Spirit to be with us and to be in this ordinary bread and this ordinary cup to transform them into the body and blood of Jesus, cleansing us from our sin and nourishing us to do your work in the world. Spirit, bind us in relationship with Jesus and with one another so we can give the world the kind of love Jesus gives us until the fullness of time comes. We can all see God face to face. Through Jesus, the Spirit and your people may be known that everything good and right and true comes from you and belongs to you forever, amazing God. Amen. This is the body of Christ which is given for you. This is the blood of Christ which is shed for you. Amen. This blessing is written by Reverend Shirley Williams. This night is our calling to go into the world, scatter to the end of the earth to love as Christ loved and serve in the name of Christ. It is our calling to remember even in our darkest hour who we are. We remember that Christ is always with us. And we remember that on this night, we were taught how to love. On this night, eternity begins and the fullness of God's reign begins to spill into our lives. So go into the world to give yourself for others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, go into the world and love in the name of the one who loved you until the end. It all begins and ends and begins again with love. This is the story. Amen.